Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be doing a deck profile for Mechlords. This is an updated deck profile. I already did a deck profile for this uh, for the first time uh, a long time ago, but with that being said, there is uh, definitely some changes to the actual format itself, to the meta, and because of that, I definitely have to adjust this deck to pretty much uh, just go up against different decks that are kind of roaming around in this particular uh, format, which is, uh, yeah, quite crazy, honestly, because uh, looking at this format, there's definitely been quite a lot of uh, significant changes, a lot of new archetypes that are just uh, roaming about, going crazy out there, uh, Despias being one of them, just uh, a huge load of big monsters that are really difficult to get over, and I figure Mechlords is honestly one of those decks that actually really fit in this particular format. Uh, I truly believe so, simply because you can really bring out the biggest monsters out there really easily with no problem whatsoever. So with that being said, why not try playing this in this particular format a lot more and uh, figure out what it could actually do in terms of its potential to bring out big big sticks. But uh, nevertheless, definitely leave your thoughts as to what you think about this particular deck. But with that being said, let's begin. So starting off here, we're playing three copies of our Triskelion. Uh, this is definitely a really interesting card. I mean, it is obviously the big boss monster of the deck. Um, yeah, I mean, I really can't really say too much else about it. It's an amazing card that summons itself incredibly easily just by banishing three Meglord monsters with different names from your graveyard. I mean, it's a 3000 beat stick and you just whip it out. Um, honestly, it's a great card to just get over your opponent's uh, Despia monsters. And I emphasize the Despias a lot because I've just been dealing with a lot of them uh, with the locals that I've actually been attending. Uh, a lot of people are just loving the Despias. The fusions are just huge beat sticks. And yes, some of them are over 3k, but keep in mind that this is a machine deck. You could easily play limiter removal. Uh, getting over them, so definitely a fantastic choice. Next up, we just have the one copy of the Mechlord Emperor Wysaw Synchro Absorption. So this card is also a really nice card though, I only play one copy of it, I've always played one copy of it, and it's just because it has a nice effect, but aside from that, it really can't do too much else with a few other restrictions that it actually has to itself, uh, but even so, it's definitely well worth playing. Next up, we're playing three copies here of our Infinity Core. I think this is definitely quite the crucial card. Uh, obviously, it is our main searcher for the deck itself, at least for the spells and traps. Uh, but even so, it definitely does a fantastic job at what it is. Uh, you can easily also bring this out via one for one. Uh, so definitely fantastic. What I really love though is three copies of Deployer Obligato. This card just really pretty much allows you to bring out a lot of resources, which uh, is definitely great for extending your plays, of course. Uh, but, you know, I've already explained the uh, full extent of this card in the previous deck profile. Uh, so, with that being said, this is just something that I highly recommend three copies of. Moving on, we're going to be focusing now on the older Mechlord cards. So, we have here three of the Mechlord Emperor Wysaws. We have here two copies of Grenell, and we have one copy of Skill. I think uh, this is just the ratio that I've been sticking with. It's really the most optimal ratio. I would consider adding in a third copy of Weissel, but I think uh, two is definitely more than enough to suffice, at least for this particular format. Uh, aside from that though, uh, the other two being that they are, it's just really happy to stick with here. Uh, skill is nice though, to get that direct attack to, you know, overcome those big monsters. But to be honest, with this deck having so many big beat sticks anyway, and the limiter removal, I don't really think you need to worry too much about just going for direct attacks with the skill. Uh, but even so, this is definitely a fantastic lineup that I highly recommend. And of course, we have the Mechlord armies as well. So that would be the Wysol, which we are playing one copy of. One copy of Grinnell and two copy of Skill. So it's kind of like the reverse of the other uh, Emperors. So with this particular case, Skill is the more desired card to actually go for in terms of the army. 
uh, but all of them do definitely have their traits that allow them to work quite uh, sufficiently for this particular deck itself but this is the ratio that I originally went with and this is the ratio that I'm going to be sticking with for this particular format. Alright so for now for some different changes at least compared to the previous deck profile in this particular format, I've decided to actually go with the Draw and Lockbird. I think this card is definitely uh, quite powerful when compared to Ash. A lot of people tend to consider this card as uh, the bait of sorts. So the thing is, like most people would try to negate your Ash, at least with the Cord by the Cord by the Grave or with uh, Designator, but they don't really go with the Draw and Lockbird because they only assume that people would play maybe one copy or two copies of this in the deck but I'm maxing it out at three and making it as the main card to deter the opponent from actually searching and in this particular day and age I although I think Ash is still a viable option stopping just one search is really not going to do much uh, Draw and Lockbird just locks them out a lot better in this particular format given that there's a deck that is uh, quite notorious and that is the punk deck if you guys actually know so the punk archetype when mixed with the adventurer archetype makes for quite a deadly combo definitely really powerful and their searches are just endless so with that being said the drawn lockbird is definitely a fantastic card to just lock them out as soon as they go for their very first search the other card i'm actually also going to go for as well which kind of uh, goes hand in hand with the punk archetype as well as the adventurer archetype and honestly even with the despia archetype i'm going with the nibiru here the nibiru is absolutely amazing here it allows you to easily just uh clear your opponent's board and prevent them from further plays or at least disrupt them by getting rid of a lot of their key cards this also works incredibly well with dragon links as well which i still definitely do a lot with so with that being said these are the hand traps that I have chosen to actually go with in this particular deck. I personally think it works out. At least this is given for the locals that I attend. Whereas uh, for you guys, you could easily just readjust this. You could put in Ash if you want, or you could put in Valar, but these are the ones that have uh, turned out to be uh, more optimal for my circumstances. So onto the spells, we are going to be playing three copies of Mechlord Assembly. Uh, really not much else to say about it, it's just a really amazing card allowing you to just add your Mechlords from your deck to your hand uh, with a few other additional effects as well, but uh, definitely something I would play three of. However, to continue with the three copies of, we're going to be playing three copies of the Cosmic Cyclone. So many field spells that it's just really annoying. There's the one for the Adventurers, uh, there is um, Magical Meltdown which is surprisingly still played, very annoying, there is obviously uh, the Dragon Ravine for the Dragon Lynx and of course there's the Bootsack the Launch as well which is uh, quite another card as well. I surprisingly have been dealing with Sky Strikers too which is uh, not something I really like to play against honestly, it's not a fun deck to go up against let me just say. Uh, quite the tedious deck to deal with and with that being said just uh, eliminating all their choices is definitely fantastic so Cosmic Cyclone has just become a mainstay in my deck at least for this particular deck. However given that this is a machine deck definitely have to play three copies of Limiter Removal an absolutely crucial card a fantastic card I can't recommend it enough. And for a few one ofs for the deck, we're going to be playing one for one. Pretty obvious, I've been mentioning it throughout already. Uh, we have the Harpy's Feather Duster again, just to deal with some back row. We don't want to be disrupted. One day of peace, just to allow us to kind of uh, break the silence for a bit, and that would be fantastic there. We have Raigeki clearing boards, allowing you to bring out your big monsters to then just go for the straight attack. Uh, of course, you have to use it carefully. Use it only when you know you're about to just clear their. Or at least like finish them off you know so fantastic there and caught by the grave uh, is pretty self-explanatory of course still wish it's back at three but we just got to work with what we have and finally for trap cards we're going to be playing here the one copy of eradicator uh, not too bad here but we most importantly will be adding in a new card here which i will be uh, considering as a mainstay and that is three copies of rivalry it is fantastic it allows you to only focus on just one type but your deck is machines anyway so there's no need for you to worry about anything else 
and with that being said it really disrupts the opponent because these days you're seeing so many different decks that are just mixing in different archetypes you know and uh, yeah it's just really fantastic in fact there are so many decks now that are just incorporating the punk deck and or the punk archetype and the punk will have a lot of psychics obviously so with that being said, it definitely contradicts with a lot of the typings that a lot of other decks actually using itself when incorporating it with the punks. So with that being said, the rivalry is definitely a fantastic way to just stop them or at least render a few of their cards dead in their hand or in their entire deck. Now for the extra deck, I honestly wouldn't even bother making an extra deck for this, but you know, you have your general toolbox card, so whatever you actually have available, just go for it. I mean, literally, this is just what I picked out just to go to my locals in the last minute. I found it to be really useful just to go for the general toolbox stuff. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I needed. But honestly, I won most of my games without any of the extra deck itself, given I didn't win much. I only won two games in the entire tournament. But with that being said, uh, it is still definitely fantastic to actually have something to fall back to just in case something goes wrong. So that essentially sums it up for this particular deck profile. I do hope you guys enjoyed this. I am trying out this new recording uh, setup. So hopefully you guys do like the way it's being angled. Normally I face it directly down so that you guys can see the cards. Though I figure if you're here for the deck profile, I don't really assume that there's many new players out there and that a lot of people are already really familiar with the cards and what they actually do. So with that being said, um, this is just what I'm going with right now. Uh, it's also with the fact that I have a new phone which is just too big that it can't actually fit on my tripod anymore and as a result um, I just have to adjust it in such a weird way that yeah it's just been set up in this particular format so you know if you guys don't like this particular setup definitely let me know i'm happy to just change it back to how it was uh, but with that being said i uh, hope you guys enjoyed this particular deck profile definitely let me know uh, how you guys go as well using this deck in this particular format like i said earlier it's definitely that one deck that you definitely have to try out in this particular format it just feels right to play this particular deck right now but uh yeah that's pretty much it so thanks for joining me today guys i hope to see you again next time